Homicide Lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And my goal here today is to walk you through our investigation and what led us to the indictment of Dwayne Davis, also known as KVD, for the murder of Tupac Shakur. This case has been reviewed by our homicide team and homicide detectives for over two and a half decades. And ultimately, our persistence in this investigation has paid off. Let me walk you through a timeline of events uh, that, as we know them right now. Prior to September 7th of 1996, as we all know, Tupac Shakur was an artist who was signed with Death Row Records. And that Death Row Records and its CEO, Mary Shug Knight, were closely affiliated with the Mob Piru criminal street gangs. And that they had an ongoing feud with the South Side Compton Crips. Dwayne Davis was the leader and shot caller of the South Side Compton Crips. And both of these gangs operated out of the Southern California area of Compton. On the night of September 7th, of 1996, Tupac Shakur, along with Suge Knight, and members of their entourage, which include members of Mob Piru, came to Vegas to attend the Mike Tyson fight at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Members of the South Side Compton Crips, which included Dwayne Davis, along with his nephew Orlando Anderson, were also in attendance at the same event. As both were leaving the fight, members of Death Row Records spotted Orlando Anderson near an elevator bay bank inside the MGM, and at that time they began to kick and punch him near that elevator bank. I will now show you hotel security footage, as many of you have already seen, related to this incident. And on this incident, you will see Tupac Shakur, who is wearing a shiny satiny shirt, along with Marion Shug Knight, who is a large man in a brown suit, punching and kicking Orlando Anderson. Following this incident, you'll see hotel security intervene, and then they will leave the area of the fight. Little did anyone know that it is this incident right here that would ultimately lead to the retaliatory shooting and death of Tupac Shakur. Following this incident, Tupac and Suge Knight both left the MGM to make their way to a post-fight party, which was to occur at a local nightclub. At the same time, word had spread amongst members of the Southside Compton Crips of what had occurred inside the MGM. And then, that's when Dwayne Davis began to devise a plan to obtain a firearm and retaliate against Suge Knight and Mr. Shakur for what occurred inside the hotel against Mr. Anderson. After Davis obtained a gun, he entered into a white Cadillac along with Terrence Brown, DeAndre Smith, and Orlando Anderson. Based on our investigation, this is where we know they were seated. At some point in time, as they were in the white Cadillac, Mr. Davis took the gun that he had obtained and provided it to the passengers in the rear seat of the vehicle. As they were both, as they were driving west on Flamingo Road near Koval, they located the black BMW, which was driven by Suge Knight, and then the passenger seat was Tupac Shakur. And as they turned around, they pulled up near the passenger side of that vehicle and immediately began shooting at Mr. Knight and Mr. Shakur. Following that shooting, the white Cadillac fled the area southbound on Koval, and as our, after our officers arrived on scene, Tupac was later transported to the University Medical Center, where he was treated medically and died approximately six days later on September 13th. My homicide section handled this investigation from its onset and for a short amount of time. And within a short amount of time, what we knew was that we were working at gang investigation where our victims, our witnesses, and our suspects were all from Southern California and not local to Las Vegas. Within the first few months of the investigation, our detectives knew most of the information I just briefed you on. 
However, we never had the necessary evidence to bring this case forward and present it for criminal charges. As time went on, this case had been reviewed multiple times by different investigators assigned to my section, but it wasn't until 2018 that this case was reinvigorated as additional information came to light related to this homicide. Specifically, Dwayne Davis's own admissions to his involvement in this homicide investigation that he provided to numerous different media outlets. In our section, we knew at this time that this was likely our last time to take a run at this case to successfully solve this case and bring forth a criminal charge. It was at that time that this case was assigned to Cliff Mogg, a detective within my homicide section. And over the last five years, this, my section worked closely, hand in hand with the Clark County District Attorney's Office and followed a systematic investigative plan Hit the like button over the last five years. Subscribe. We've conducted countless interviews and corroborated numerous facts that were not only consistent with the crime scene on the night of the incident, but also corroborated and were consistent with the sequence of events that night. This ultimately led to us procuring a search warrant which was executed at Mr. Davis's residence in Henderson, Nevada. And following the execution of that search warrant, in close coordination with the District Attorney's Office, 